What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are tackling the statement which we are unified in defending. Absolutely. Students should surpass instructors. You think we'll ruffle feathers? No. I always think we're going to ruffle feathers. We, we never don't do. ruffle feathers. Just once I would like to. Somebody, Can someone out there ruffle their feathers and tell us about it, please? Right, right, right. Get their hackles up. Um, just as an aside, this is what happens when you record several episodes at once, and uh, you get deeper into it, and it gets sillier. So, yeah. all right. If you're new to the show... <laughs> if you're new to the show, I'm sorry. Good luck. <laughs> What we do here on Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio is we tackle subjects and we interview people from the traditional martial arts world because we, as an organization, as a brand, are looking to connect, educate, and entertain you, the traditional martial artists of the world. And if you want to see all the things that we're doing, because it is a lot more than this show, you can go to whistlekick.com and see references, pages, links to all of the things that we've got going on from our social media to projects that we sponsor to our store. In the store is a bunch of products, shirts and hats and training gear and training programs and events. all kinds of events and all kinds of cool stuff that you likely would be interested in. And if you find something you're interested in, you can use the code podcast15, save you 15%, lets us know that, hey, when we do this show, sometimes people buy stuff. It's a good thing from a business management standpoint to know where your customers come from. So that's why we do it. Now, if you want to do things beyond that to help us out we've also got a patreon where we get you exclusive content behind the scenes mostly around this show but at times around other things related to our brand but if you want the whole list the whole shebang if you will of things you can do to support us in our mission whistlekick.com slash family go check out that page students should surpass instructors yes goodbye thank you thank you for coming to my ted talk <laughs> all right <clears throat> there's a word in there mm -hmm. that we don't generally use that i've actually worked really hard to remove from my vocabulary mm -hmm. and it's shocking to me that i agree with its usage it should i think it's appropriate in this instance should because not only does it a often not happen mm -hmm. i think instructors there are a subset of instructors that encourage to make sure that does not happen. Yeah. So when when we make this statement, let's take a step back. Yeah. If you watch Thursday shows, you know we we both tend to spend a little bit of time like around definitions and language at the beginning to make sure we're all on the same, same page because it's hard to have a discussion when you're talking about a word in one way and I'm talking about it in another way, yep. Yep. and the audience has their own third way of doing it. We are talking about the collective group students, yep. meaning the current generation of martial artists that are actively engaged as students mm -hmm. in schools should surpass instructors. Again, a collective. If we do our job right, the next generation of martial artists is better than the current generation of martial artists. And I think this could be said for, for anything. If, if I'm a biology teacher and I'm teaching biology, I want my students to learn more than I know. Here's the, here's the difference. This does happen everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Are today's martial artists better than yesterday's martial artists? If we were to survey, not in that broad way, but in a specific way, mm -hmm. um, do you think your instructor at this point in their martial arts career is better than their instructor at the, at the same point? I think a lot of people, I don't know that I would say most, but a lot of people would say no. Mm. Yep. We have this, um, we celebrate what came before in a way that nothing else does. Correct. I couldn't agree more. When you look at <clears throat> sports, and uh, normally this is where I go to basketball, I'll put basketball aside for a moment. <laughs> okay. Today's crop of athletes outperforms yesterday's crop of athletes. Without a doubt. We see at the Olympics, time and again, new records being set at world championships, new records being set. Yeah. It People happens, are always getting better. It happens continually because when you understand a thing is possible, you continue to get better. Okay. We have the opposite attitude in martial arts. 
they were better back then. Yep. Better back then. Yep. We, Who's the most celebrated martial artist currently? I would say probably Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. He's been gone for 50 years. Yep. I'm not diminishing the accomplishments accomplishments he's made nope. but if we are constantly looking backwards we are not looking today we are not looking forward yep. and that means that we cannot progress he's gone yeah he can't give us new stuff yep and i i think just because we'll go back to the sports analogy sure how many of those olympic athletes are being coached by someone who's better than them because if the if the coach is better than the athlete why is the coach not in the Olympics, right? That doesn't mean you can't learn things from someone who's not as – I mean, they're, they're being coached by that person for a reason, right? So – Well, again, everywhere but martial arts, we recognize exactly. that the ability to coach or teach is separate from the ability to do. Correct. Yeah. But not in martial arts. Not in martial arts. Because if you can't do it, you can't teach me how to do it better. Nope. That's that's how I read every online comment. You know, one of, one of the, the best um, – Highland dancing instructors. Mm. So uh, for the uh, listeners, you know, I'm involved in bagpipe bands and the, the community has Highland, Scottish Highland dancing. And one of the, she continually produces dancers that compete at the top of the, mm. of the game and winning world championships. And she is a very large woman. She cannot dance mm. anymore. She used to, but she can't. Is she anymore. as good as she's trained people up to though? I don't know that she was, to be honest. And, but, and, and but that's a great illustration. But she's phenomenal. I mean, her students are phenomenal. And but she can't do it. Yeah. This happens all the time. Yeah. So now that we've unpacked what it is we're talking about, why isn't it happening? It's because we're looking to the past. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something kind of towards the top of the episode about instructors holding students back. Tell us yeah. more about that. Um, I think there, it, it it all stems from ego. Without a doubt, hundred percent, it all stems from ego. Stupid ego. I'm teaching it, uh, and I'm in, I'll use myself because mm -hmm. I don't mind vilifying myself. Uh, I'm the instructor in the class, and I'm teaching a bunch of students. I want them to continue to put me on a pedestal, which we did an episode about about how that's bad, but. I want to be able to look down upon my students and survey the scene. And, you know, for those that are just listening, I'm kind of propping my chest down, her, 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 thumbs in my belt and, thumbs and, belts. and looking down at them so that I seem as important as I can. Yeah. If my students start to get better than me, they are not, the fear is, my fear is they are not going to continue to look up to me. For those of you out there who teach, who have schools, who have students, let me potentially burst your bubble. Very few, if any of your students, come to train with you because you're awesome. Yep. They come to train with you for what you can teach them. They want to learn from you. They want to become better. They don't want to come and pray at the foot of the master. It's not how most people set out to do anything. <coughs> are there exceptions? Sure. Mm -hmm. There are, I mean, we follow a variety of, of famous martial artists, mm -hmm. you know, former mm -hmm. competitors or movie stars or people celebrated for whatever reasons. And yeah, there are people who, you know, like to kiss butt virtually. And, and I've seen some of them in person you know, not literally kissing butt, but, you know, just wanting to be around people. Yeah, yeah. That's not most of them. Most people who train want to train. They want to become better at what they do. Mm -hmm. And as an instructor, our role should be to help them achieve everything we've learned and more. Because let's remember, we made mistakes in our development. Every one of us looks back and says, you know what? If I had it to do over again, to get where I am now, given what I know, I could do it faster. Mm, sure. Absolutely. If that is the case, your students should surpass you. Not each and every one of them specifically, but some of them. You should be able to take everything you know and convey it mm -hmm. in a more efficient manner because you're able to look at it with hindsight 
it's difficult to look at that with foresight. Yeah. But to look at it with hindsight and say, okay, here are all the things I know how to do. Here are all the things that I think are important. Let me run you through that. You don't necessarily have to have someone do 10,000 repetitions of a thing before you give them the next thing. Mm -hmm. Could there be a lesson in there? Sure. But just because that's what was done for you does not mean it is the necessity that you do it for the next generation. Let me share a really quick anecdote with you. Uh, back in the mid-90s, as a teenager, I was competing fairly heavily and got to know some people on the competitive circuit. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the people I got to know very well, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched episode what was Master Ken? 40 something? Well, I don't remember. Um, one of the people I got to know very well was Master Ken's instructor. Mm -hmm. Master Ken, Matt Page from Maine. We had a crush on the same girl. Like this, this, <laughs> this is, it's Maine, right? Like there weren't a lot of people and there were very few people on, actually he dated her anyway. Um, so he won. He won. He definitely won. I mean, it's yeah. shout out to Sadie. He's, He's Master Ken. She's great. So. Um, and so this gentleman had, was competing as an adult and had an adult student, Ferdy, who was amazing. And I would watch them compete in the same division. Against each other. Against each other. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen that before. I was like 15. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I thought it was weird, right? Because I'd never seen it before. And most of my understanding, even though I didn't come from a culture of suppression within the martial arts, I did come from a culture of respect. And so I didn't sure. have context for it. Yep. So, but I knew him well enough, and I, and I went up to him. And I said, Sensei, what, what, is it weird is for weird? you yeah. to compete with your student? Like, like, what if he wins? He says, I hope he wins. Yeah. Because as an instructor, what better honor is there for me than to get beat by my own student? Now, these aren't exactly his words. Yeah. But this is the, the spirit. I remember how I felt. I remember what he was conveying to me and I, because it was so impactful mm -hmm. to me. And that day, his student did beat him. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't remember if it was the first time, but it was one of the first times. And I remember how genuinely happy he wasn't putting on a fake smile yep. Yep. because he knew that that success was represented of both of them. It was his student's Absolutely. hard work and his ability to teach him to get him there. And I will tell you, this exact thing has happened to me, not within martial arts, but within drumming. Mm. So I compete and I'm a competitive drummer and I have had students at all levels mm -hmm. and I will remember Shout out to, he will never listen to this, but his name is <laughs> Mike Shoppy. And he and I, he got up to the same level that I was. And we competed against each other. He was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he just graduated high school. And he beat me. And I was so genuinely happy for him. And he has gone on to be better than I am now today. Like That's he's awesome. much better than I am. And we're still great friends. We, you know, we we still reminisce about the quote good old days. Um, but that shows that I do more teaching than I did playing. Mm -hmm. And that's if I want to pass on knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now we relate this back to martial arts. If I want to pass on the knowledge of martial arts, if I don't pass on everything that I have and hope mm -hmm. that the student learns more, then every generation's martial arts will be worse. Right. That's the why. That's that's why you should be trying to make your students better than you. Because if you're at this level, for those just listening, I'm putting my hand up, and then all of your students don't get to that level, they get to a little bit less than there, and then all of their students get to a little bit less, and then their students get to a little bit less, two or three or four generations from now, everyone's martial arts will not be as good as it is now. We want it to stay. We can't, as Ian Abernathy says, preserve it in amber. Mm. Right? We don't want it to just stay exactly the same because then it doesn't grow. You cannot have growth without change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me ask you a question about how you felt with this student of yours. Did you feel like you had a piece 
in him getting to that level oh, and surpassing there's, him. Oh, there's no doubt about it. He had no other instructor in, except me. I mean, I remember starting him out holding sticks. Like, here's how you hold sticks. Oh, seriously? Absolutely. Like, like, I, from very beginning. And wow. when he, he went on to play with bands that were much better than I was at the time and went on to play in a very famous drum corps in Canada. Oh, that's um, so cool. And the lead drummer for that band, is, his father was like – his father was essentially Gishin Fonokoshi of the drumming world. Okay. Right. He, he, amazing guy. And when I first met this gentleman, so he was the son of mm -hmm. Gishin Fonokoshi. wasn't really, but uh, he had, I never met him before. And it was kind of an honor because he's a big deal. Yeah. Or his dad was a big deal. Sure. Uh, and he is now because of that. And, and I said, you know, so nice to meet you. And, um, you know, Mike Shoppy is playing in your core, and I just want you to know that I taught him how to hold sticks. And he looks at me and goes, "You were his instructor. Thank you very much." Mm. Because how did you feel in that moment? It was it was amazing. I felt it felt so good. Yeah. It really did. Um, but yeah, I, he had had no other instructor until that point, mm. uh, and he eventually went off and got a different instructor who was better than I was, and I'm fine with that. And he has gone on and continues to do amazing things. In the drumming world, yeah, hmm. that's a great story. Yeah, this is pretty cool. That. This this idea that as as we internalize knowledge, we should build efficiency and create the opportunity for people to get better. You said that he was in high school when he started. Yeah, well, he was he was between he was the summer before his freshman year in high school when I first met him. Okay. So it took how many years of drumming for him to surpass five? Him? And how many years had you been drumming at that point? Oh, gosh. 20, 15, maybe? Okay. 15 or 20. So in five years, you got him 15 years of education. Yeah. Now, granted, he he took it as a high school class. He had, he had a lesson with me five days a week, which I didn't have when I was a kid. But sure. still... <clears throat> But you still created, collectively, you created the opportunity for him to have plenty more time. Yep. And so now he has how many more years to continue to grow? And maybe at some point he or a contemporary of his says, you know what? This is fun. I want to pass on my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to take your 15 years that's been condensed mm -hmm. and everything else he learned from other people. And that's condensed. And then his students are going to be able to surpass him in whatever condensed period of time versus what it took him to receive that knowledge. And for myself as an instructor, you know, not, not a full-time instructor or, or an, currently instructor of my own school, mm -hmm. but I really enjoy taking a difficult concept and being able to illustrate it in an efficient way so that people can progress. You've seen me teach, you yeah, know absolutely. how much I enjoy that. That to me is the true manifestation of understanding something is your ability to take it and simplify it and convey it and have people demonstrate competency and have it understood in a mm -hmm. shorter period of time than you received it. It is my hope that the things I share with people, they continue to make better and then teach it back to me mm -hmm. so I can get better. Because if we truly embody this notion mm -hmm. in the martial arts that by challenging each other, not just phys physically, we make each other better, right? We keep saying iron sharpens iron, right? Like we throw that around in our world mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. often. Yeah. It exists beyond simple physical concepts. It exists in thought, in mission, in philosophy that we test against each other. We figure out what makes the most sense and we run from that. That is a continual or should be a continual process. Now, let's talk to the instructors who don't want to make their students better. Pause. Yeah. We will get there. You said something that made me think of something else. Okay. Uh, the last piece of this puzzle with my drum student that got better than me. Yeah. About uh, eight, nine years after he graduated high school, he moved away. Mm -hmm. Better than I am. Whatever. He goes off does his thing. He gets hired to teach at a week-long bagpiping and drumming seminar that I go as a student. 
Now, I was also hired by the school. I did administrative stuff for them. Sure. But because I was on site, I was like, hey, you know, I'm here. I'm going to take classes as well. Yeah. Mike was one of my teachers. Did you learn stuff? Oh, absolutely. Because he had gone off and learned stuff on how to do things from other people. And in class, he would be teaching those things. And I was like, oh. You know what? I never thought about teaching it that way. That was kind of hmm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that for my students. Yeah. So iron sharpens iron. When we talk analogy. about the idea of cross training and how in certain contexts it makes a lot of sense, that's exactly Perfect. why. Okay. So now we can talk to the instruct the other instructors. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. You're focused on the wrong things. Your physical skills are not the greatest indication of your contributions to the world. Nope. And if you continue to hold on to your physical skills and your insistence that what you do in all capacities be better than all of your students, you're going to wake up one day and realize I can never demonstrate any of my physical skills to my students because my skills have deteriorated for whatever reason, lack of time training, age, injury. Yep probably a collection of the three, but my whole culture in my school, my entire identity as a martial artist, and frankly, in my observation for people who fit this mold, identity as a human being and place in the world yep. is dependent on me being better. And so what you end up doing is you hold your students back because they continue to identify you as better. So you've created an artificial ceiling for the progress of their skills. Or you start to be celebrated as legend with these mm -hmm. grandiose yeah. ideas of what you did back then that nobody really saw, but you create such a gap between where your best students are and where you were right. that they think they will never reach the standing that you had. Yep. And we fall further into the trap that you talked about with, each generation getting worse. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Your students should progress beyond where you are. Not all of them, but they all deserve the opportunity. Don't hold them back. You deserve the ability to progress as an instructor by becoming a more efficient instructor and learning new and better ways to express that information. Yeah. And if you feel like your students are not getting better, if they're not progressing beyond you, it's probably a result of you needing more skill as an instructor. And what's the number one way to learn how to be a better instructor? Work with other instructors. Work with other instructors. In fact, our very first episode we ever did together really? was how to be a better instructor. Oh. Do you want to know what number that was? No. Okay. Sometimes you remember the numbers. I remember very few of the numbers. Well, that episode's out there. Maybe we can link it in the show notes. Sure. Okay. 500 and something. Okay. I don't think we ruffled any feathers because I don't think anybody who fits this is going to admit to being this. No, that's a good point. Yep. And they probably don't listen to our show anyway. Whistlekick tends to attract people that, you know, would want to continue us. to get better in yeah. all of the ways because they see that that is the true value of martial arts. Yep. Not in being able to... <sighs> I am better than everyone always. No, you're not. I am. The best martial artists I know continued to become better martial artists. Mm -hmm. And helped others to become better. For sure. That's it. Thanks for coming by. If you want to support us, Patreon. Buy something. Whistlekick.com slash family. You can buy this t-shirt. Follow us on social media. Sign up for our newsletter. Have me come teach a seminar at your school. Email us, Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. We have training programs. Events. Events. Stuff. If you have topic or guest suggestions, if you do have feedback on this episode, the number one place is a Facebook group. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. If you don't want to share it publicly or maybe you're not on Facebook or for whatever reason, you can email us. All of our episodes are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's good. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great day. day. Yeah. Yay! That's good. That one's good. <laughs>